Good morning to the participants in the United States and good afternoon to those in Turkey or Europe. We have started our session with the address of Minister of Industry and Technology, Mr. Varank. I would like to thank him for his messages. And today we have an excellent panel on the trade and investments. These are two important issues which are globally going through significant challenges. Global trade and investments were already under strain before the COVID-19. The pandemic has just exposed the weak things in the global trade and investment, sec uh, investment networks. According to WTO, global trade is expected to shrink between 13 to 30 percent in 2020. Similarly, UNCTAD estimates that global foreign direct investments could decrease up to 40 percent this year. Faced with disrupted global value chains, Multinational corporations have been trying to increase their resilience across their supply networks. It has been widely discussed that multinational companies are looking for nearshoring or regionalizing their supply chains in order to diversify and secure their supplier base. In this regard, Turkey is well positioned for the US companies as a convenient and reliable place to secure their regional supply networks which might be critical to access the market in Europe, MENA, and Central Asia. Similarly, investments into the U.S. is important for Turkish companies to secure their supply chain and market access. Considering the strong economic relations between two countries, I believe we can further capitalize on this unique opportunity to foster great partnerships and cooperation in the trade and investments. Moreover, the two countries' leaders have set ambitious targets to increase bilateral trade to 100 billion US dollars. Today, we will talk about bilateral trade and investment opportunities and challenges during our panel. Also, how can we achieve target of 100 billion dollars of trade between Turkey and US? This is a crucial question, and we are trying to we are going to try to answer it. Today, we are joined by four distinguished speakers from prominent companies. Let me briefly introduce our panelists. Our first panelist is Ms. Aysham Sargan, who is the Managing Director and Country Executive of Boeing Turkey. Ms. Sargan is also President of the International Investors Association of Turkey, in short, YASET. Our second panelist is Mr. Tanko Turnoğlu, who, who he already introduced himself. Just to uh, reiterate, he is Senior Vice President of Procter & Gamble for Turkey, Caucasus, and Central Asia, and he is also President of MCM Turkey. Our third panelist is Mr. Trevor Gunn, who is VP of International Relations for Medtronic. Last but not least, we have Mr. Joel Johnson, who is CEO of Borusan Management Pipe in United States. I will be very quick, so let me start with uh, Ms. Sargan. Ayşem Hanım, YASET represents leading international investors in Turkey. Could you share with us your insights on investments and supply chain decisions of global companies? What makes them invest and exp expand their supply chain in Turkey? And uh, how do you think the recent pandemic impacted those decisions? Today, I would like to also thank uh, the U.S. Chamber and Turkey U.S. Business Council for their kind invitation. Yes, we are all familiar I think, with um, the key drivers under investment decisions through the years. The minister emphasized the few by Turkey's market size, country's growth track, growth potential, um, its proximity to some key markets, its dynamic private sector. So we have a long list. Um, but at the end of the day, all these global companies were able to find the right cost quality equation in Turkey. They stepped into the country, even expanded their investments in time. On the supply chain side, we see a very similar pattern. These are long-term commitments like FDI. Uh, some factors are more important compared to others for supply chains. For instance, Turkey's developed industrial capability is a big asset in that sense. So, so far for all the contracts Turkey has uh, won, 
at international scale, this developed industrial capability helped a lot. Then its proximity to some major hubs, major production hubs, some key markets also helped Turkey win contracts. But it's important to mention here that winning these contracts uh, is not easy and only industrial capability doesn't mean much. We need these industrial facilities to have the right international standards in place. We need to globalize them. We need to make these in industries globally competitive. They should be able to compete and win in the global marketplace. So Turkey has had some champions in this area. I'm fortunate to be working in the aerospace and defense sector. We have a, quite a few companies who are working at global scale who have success uh, stories, but we need more of these companies in the upcoming period. Um, so uh, I think upcoming period is a big question. I think you rightfully touched on some points that we are going to be focusing on altogether in the post COVID-19 period. Um, as you were uh, referring to the UNCTAD report, yes, there'll be very few investors around in the next couple of years. Um, now all the countries are doing their best to attract this limited FDI, which will be acting very cautiously, cautiously too. Um, there'll be a big race for a smaller pie. For supply chain contracts, I think there'll be opportunities because we will be seeing some shifts. All the factors that you were mentioning, um, these shifts are, are going to be um, in line with those regionalization trends and Turkey will have opportunities. So there will be opportunities to win more supply chain contracts. But I think we have some homework to do. Uh, all countries have homework to do, but Turkey specifically, uh, we have been working very closely, as you said, with your office, Mr. Dalo. So I know you're familiar with all the uh, work that's going into uh, attracting more investments and attracting more supply chain work to Turkey. I think uh, Turkey's biggest challenge uh, right now is to digitalize its industry and workforce. And this is not only about FDI or supply chain work. This is about remaining competitive in this new world order. That will naturally bring some competitive edge as we attract more investment, as we attract for more supply chain work. Um, then uh, we should also be looking at uh, some government support, government incentives, some customized incentives uh, for addressing the investors' expectations will be really important. On the supply chain side, these certification uh, processes take a long time. They are very costly. Turkey already has some mechanisms to support these industries. But now, because we want to get a bigger share out of this pie, we probably need to set aside more financing and more effort uh, to make this happen. Uh, and beyond all that, uh, we were talking about a more limited FDR, a more cautious FDI and supply chain uh, side too is looking for the same, um, let's say safe heavens, safe uh, harbors to invest. Uh, we probably should take into account the fact that these companies will be trying very hard to minimize their risks in the upcoming period, given an extreme risk environment, uncontrollable risk environment for the parts we can control, providing a, a stable, investment environment, providing some kind of visibility to investors will be key. So um, I hope this answered some of the questions, but I'm happy to elaborate more. I don't want to take up everybody's time. Uh, thank you. We will have a second round of the questions. So I'd like to continue with Mr. Turnoğlu. Uh, Tankut Bey, uh, I know and appreciate that one of the MCM Turkey's priority is to pursue great participation uh, in global value chains through their partner SMEs in Turkey. Could you elaborate on the ways in uh, which MCM Turkey members contribute to Turkey's stronger participation in global value chains, especially during the pandemic? Yeah. Uh, Please. Thank you, Burak Bey. Uh, first of all, let me introduce MCM Turkey a little bit. Uh, we have more than 100 members. Uh, there are many iconic companies known all around the world. 
And we position ourselves in Turkey actually uh, as the power that carries Turkey to the global markets. And that has uh, especially a component in investments, employment and exports. And also, as you underline, connecting our local business partners with global value chains. Uh, Mr. Minister also mentioned one example from our company, but we have many from many of our members. Our key priorities for this year actually uh, has been uh, on top of protecting the existing investments, also providing active support to attract new US investments and trade to Turkey, and pursue greater participation in the global value chains for our partner Turkish SMEs. Uh, as Shemanam just mentioned, uh, we have many, many examples of that. Uh, Boeing is an important uh, uh, member in our uh, board, and also their examples are uh, putting this into real, real life. Uh, today, uh, actually, uh, our members uh, contribute almost 100 billion uh, dollars of uh, investments in Turkey up until now, uh, creating more than 100,000 employment. But if you add the, our local partners, you can multiply this by two or three. For example, in Procter & Gamble, uh, just give you one example, we have, yes, uh, close to 500 suppliers. Out of this, uh, they export out of Turkey almost $175 million. And out of these suppliers, the local ones are very uh, predominantly doing that export. And that is higher than our own export, which is $120 million. So you can really see the impact. And one of the important uh, uh, advantages in Turkey is also the recent incentives for the R&D centers. And we, as Procter & Gamble, established the R&D center. Actually, the Procter & Gamble's newest R&D center is in Turkey now, established two years ago. And they uh, work with the uh, local partners, uh, bringing their standards up to a level so they can not only pro uh, provide products for PNG in Turkey, but all uh, our uh, uh, sister companies all around the world. And those examples were actually uh, Mr. Minister was mentioning. One clear example is uh, during the pandemic, there was a break in the supply of uh, one ingredient for our detergents from China. But we were able to actually cooperate with a local company in Eskisher through our R&D center. And uh, we were able to then uh, continue our operations. So. Uh, in fact, we also want to uh, highlight the MCHAM's uh, power to carry those global uh, to SMEs to the global value chain. In our recent awards, we are adding new categories for the uh, Turkish companies uh, who have partnered with the US companies for exports, especially uh, during this period. Uh, which I think shows the importance of Turkey uh, to uh, to make up for any break in the in the global value chains, especially in the nearshoring uh, pursuit of many of our uh, many of our members. Uh, I think what I can here uh, tell to the lo those local suppliers uh, that this is a marathon. So they have to be ready, uh, focus on the long-term benefit and be patient, focus on quality and cost optimization. As Aisha Manum said, digitalization in the production to ensure price competitiveness, invest in capacity and human resources, of course, participate in international affairs, and develop advanced planning and scenario analysis competencies to better position themselves to successfully enter to the global markets. I think those are a little bit the uh, advices that we can give to local suppliers who wants to uh, join efforts with our members and uh, get themselves into the global value chains in this period. 
Thank you Tankut Bey. These were really great tips. I hope the followers uh, or the audience of this session uh, has taken their uh, notes. So uh, thanks for uh, all the explanation. So uh, I would like to go to a very crucial sector. I mean, uh, since we are uh, having a global pandemic, I would like to uh, give the to Mr. Gan. You are in healthcare sector, which is at the center of the uh, pandemic. So how has life changed for Medtronic's global operations during the pandemic? And how is the pandemic affect the business environment in your uh, countries of operations? Of course, uh, including Turkey. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Burak Bey. Thank you very much to Taik and uh, our colleagues, U.S. Chamber, uh, for inviting us here. Um, uh, first time in Turkey 32 years ago this year, uh, my wife and I, and, and every moment I can spend with Turkey is, is time well spent. So thank you for, for, for your friendship and, um, and, and the question. Well, the, the past six months have really been a test for our industry, the medical technology industry. We're the largest player in that industry, as you know, uh, globally and, and, the large, and the largest producer of respiratory technologies. Uh, and, and so maybe just three points I'd like to make, similar to my colleagues at P&G, Boeing, supply chains are very important to understand the, the, the depth of our upstream supply chain in Medtronic. We have approximately 49,000 companies that supply Medtronic and then we produce globally 131,000 SKUs under the Medtronic brand name. So that's a, a vast a vast supply chain. So when you think about the upstream supply chain, most of these companies, just as our colleagues have said, are small and medium-sized companies. Often maybe one, producing one single technology in one single one of our devices that could be implanted. So it's very, very important to understand the complexity of the, the medical technology uh, supply chain industry. And, and as you can imagine, we're also a large producer of ventilators. So you can imagine what the life, our lives have been the past few months, particularly from February through to, to June, uh, where we've had significant supply chain disruptions, many countries acting uh, in their own national interest. And we don't, of course, fault them for that and taking many different uh, uh, measures in order to, to, to do what's best for their health security. Uh, and, and we don't fault them. But meanwhile, one single uh, part of one single one of those ventilators stops and there's 500 parts in a ventilator, the most, the least sophisticated ventilator, you can imagine the consequences globally when, uh, at the, that we've gone through. And so it's, it, it really has changed our view, uh, Burak Bey, of uh, the sensitivity of the supply chain. It's been a problem, of course, on the ventilators and all the other technologies that are around ventilation specifically, just getting that final product to market. Of course, many countries around the world said, no, we produce, you have to keep that technology here uh, or you have to allocate things uh, to, to our country. I'm not, I'm not gonna call out any particular country if you don't mind. Uh, and that's natural and normal also, but but we need to get over that, uh, that, that phase. And, and hope, I know many of our countries are going into the second and maybe some countries in Europe are already in the second phase, and, and countries around the world need to, to think uh, much more sensitively uh, about all areas of, of uh, medical uh, technology, PPE, diagnostic testing, and vaccines around this. So certainly it's, it's, it's maybe the second topic is that it's affected localization. It's affected how we think about it. It's affected uh, how countries are thinking about incentivizing localization because now maybe it was a question of industrial policy before, but now it's a question of vital public health. We don't have all the answers uh, and neither do the politicians in any country, but, but we're open-minded to what would make sense, uh, particularly in Turkey and other countries. Um, maybe the third point of what Medtronic did was, which was quite um, unique. Um, we decided uh, that since our mission is so important to us about getting medical technology to everyone, uh, we opened up the intellectual property um, uh, open to the world of our least sophisticated ventilator. Um, 250,000 institutions, unique institutions globally, downloaded those blueprints. Um, and, and anyone can do that. And maybe today we, we don't know how many institutions actually might be producing or thinking about producing those ventilators. 
Uh, we don't we know some, but we don't know all, and and that's actually quite nice. Uh, but it's it was our gift to the world. We think very very deeply about universal health care, and and this was the moment to do such a thing, and so we did it. What I would say is our whole industry, just in general, and, and just a, an overarching point, if I could, Barack Bay, is that it, our relationship to government institutions globally has been transformed. Many times we would have ideological discussions with many ministries of health globally, but now they understand our industry. They understand what we contribute. They understand how important it is to get a resolution and have serious discussion about some of these complicated issues. Um, and that includes, by the way, uh, some, some great relationships that our industry has built with the uh, World Health Organization, with the World Bank, uh, Islamic Development Bank, uh, the Asian Development Bank, uh, 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 EBRD that also works in, in Turkey, uh, for example. And so we really value those relationships. And, and I wish I could say that we're finished. We're not. Um, this is, uh, as somebody said earlier in another context, this is a marathon, um, even if we go through second or third waves. Maybe we go to another crisis some other time. The private and the public sectors need to speak together like human beings, like respectful uh, human beings and find practical solutions that are durable and, and really build resilient healthcare systems. Those are the things we've learned. Those are the things we've done. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the uh, those uh, all answers and the insights. I'm really uh, excited with the decision of Medtronic to uh, open all the IP to the world. Uh, and uh, one point uh, that you underlined remind me uh, a, a, a moment uh, during, uh, we had the first uh, positive case in Turkey in 11th of the March. And after that, President Ardan chaired a, a large meeting uh, with all stakeholders. And he made a, a statement that we will fight against the healthcare, uh, you know, the uh, aspect of this, uh, pandemic, but uh, we will make uh, sure that the economic activities and supply chain continues. This is a very crucial example, you know, how we are, your ventilators are manufactured. You know, there are so many suppliers on it and uh, the governments uh, must make sure that supply chains continue. So uh, thank for uh, your all contribution. So I, I would like to uh, go with, a, you know, from a different perspective. Let's uh, have the perspective from uh, the Borusan who invested in the United States. Uh, so, Mr. Johnson, what impact has the uh, pandemic had, your, uh, had on your U.S. operations? And what steps have you taken to increase the trade between Turkey and U.S., especially during the last six months uh, during the pandemic? Yes, uh, thank you very much for having me on the panel. Uh, yeah, COVID, uh, we were affected just like everyone else, uh, except we had to figure out a way because we're on the critical path uh, to the oil and gas exploration business, which never stops. It never stopped during the pandemic and it still hasn't stopped. So we had to figure out how to run a factory that we've invested in, in Baytown uh, operating on a 24-7 basis. And we... Uh, we operated throughout the process. We were deemed by the local authorities as a essential service. So we had to produce. Um, we learned a lot from our parent in Turkey. We have a sister company uh, factory in, in Northern Italy. And uh, uh, you know they were affected much sooner than us in Texas. So we, we, we put in a lot of the practices that they did. Um, everything from uh, Mask usage very early on, well before um, you know local governments and society saw that they were needed. Uh, we put in temperature controls. We restricted access. We uh, um, our our parent has developed an electronic automatic contact tracing system, which is uh, excellent. We implemented uh, contact tracing, and we've uh, implemented mandatory. Uh, uh, working from home where possible. Now we're running a factory that isn't possible for everyone, but we've we put in a lot of uh, the safe protocols, and uh, I'm pleased to, uh, you know, we've had a handful of uh, uh, positive tests, but because of contact tracing, we've we've limited the spread, and uh, none of our employees uh, who've been affected have had to be hospitalized. As far as your question on how to increase trade. I mean, we are an excellent example of how trade can be increased if the restrictions 
um, before Section 232, which was a, a 25% tariff on imported steel articles. Um, our, our factory in Baytown produces pipe, and then we also bring in pipe from Turkey, and we finish it in Texas. We've uh, uh, supplied more than a million and a half tons of material to the oil and gas sector. Uh, we're critical to that process, but uh, a number of years ago, Section 232 was put in place, and uh, that's hampered our uh, ability to increase trade. So, uh, like the minister had said earlier, um, we, we we need to get Section 232 tariffs eliminated. And one of the options is is that quotas, um, reasonable quotas, could be examined, and that would allow us to increase trade between the the two uh, countries. You know, we want a, a healthy uh, U.S steel market um, and so the investments continue and and we're going to continue to respect all the trade rules just like we've always always done oh thank you uh, it is really good to hear that uh, how you handled the uh, healthcare aspect of pandemic and thanks for your responses especially on uh, how to increase the trade so I would like to go for the second round of the question, and I want to change the order. Uh, so I would like to go to Mr. Gunn again. Considering the transformation of uh, global supply chain networks, how do you see opportunities in the Turkish healthcare sector? And I would like to ask one specific question. Uh, what do you think on the uh, target of 100 billion US dollars of bilateral uh, trade between both countries? How we can achieve this target? The opportunities already are so vast. Yes, um, so vast. In Turkey. It's it's difficult to imagine a country with greater possibilities in the healthcare sector that's already realizing many of those opportunities. The excellence uh, of the, the the Turkish healthcare sector has global renome. Um, but but practically speaking, we 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 see this uh, the, Turkey uh, as a gleaming example of private public partnerships. The way the public and the private sectors can actually work together, the big healthcare cities that have been built. We think we have a role at Medtronic and other companies to play. Um, we also think that, uh, uh, as many other companies here on the, on the call, that uh, that that uh, we we have uh, Turkey in the center of something we call the Twal region, which is Turkey West uh, West Asia and Levant, which is approximately the geography of, of so several others here. So that's. Uh, very, very important to us and continues to be a, a gleaming example. Um, we see that um, uh, education and training is, is when you think about, uh, uh, there's a lot of technology. We produce a lot of technology, but the reality is in the medical technology sector, there's massive amounts of training and education that goes on with doctors and, and still goes on. 100% of that is now transformed to, uh, to remote training and education, uh, which has been spectacular. And Perhaps uh, our most important, if not our, one of our most important training and education centers is, uh, sits in Istanbul. Um, so we actually believe that some combination of the above uh, is really going to help to offset that. Now, you know that also on the other side of the uh, ledger, there's some significant payment issues. You know, Ambassador Satterfield made mention of that earlier on to the healthcare sector. We're hoping that Turkey is going to address those uh we think that that's that's going to do a lot to, to to go towards those particular parts we know there's vigorous discussion uh there between the the medical industry um and our friends in, in turkey we'll resolve that together we'll resolve that together as 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 friends and family um but all of this goes to things like increasing medical tourism if you don't have medical technology it's very difficult to have medical tourism it's like uh, sending uh uh, a, 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 a man to a construction site without the tools. You have to have the technology, and in so doing, you need that training and education for them to, to remain on the on the on the foot. We also think that Turkey uh, can be a much more a part of innovation uh, ecosystem within medical technology globally. It's one thing to, to localize our technologies. This is a good idea, but frankly, given the excellence of the, the healthcare system in Turkey, you know, with Achi Badem. Uh, within the public sector, Bill Kent, uh, Florence Nightingale, uh, American Hastanasi, and, and other great institutions, the best doctors come, uh, the best ideas come from the doctors. 
they and, and the best ideas often come from the small and medium sized companies that are disproportionately impacted when things go well, disproportionately impacted when things go poorly, uh, but a very sensitive uh, sensitive uh, sector uh, for, for small and medium sized companies. So uh, in general, great, great opportunities. Uh, and, and thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, we are uh, happy to know that uh, Medtronic has one of the largest training centers, uh, which is a regional training center. Uh, so it's quite important, not only focusing on just manufacturing side, but we know that sometimes actually in majority pre-manufacturing activities and post-manufacturing uh, activities have higher added value. So thank you for your answer. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, regarding your operations in the United States, how do you see the future for your business? What are your future investment plans in Turkey? And one more, uh, you know, uh, aspect of this question: What do you recommend for Turkish companies uh, on, you know, investing in United States? In United States, so it is important for us to uh, increase our exports, uh, but definitely it's a part of uh, increasing the uh, trade uh, between countries. So I, I believe uh, Turkish companies must invest in United States as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we, uh, we've been uh, in Texas with this uh, facility since uh, we broke ground in 2014. You know, prior to that, we were solely exporting from Turkey and uh, bringing in finished materials. Now we produce in Texas. We're closer to the customer. Uh, we've always had a mind of, of uh, investing further. For example, we have, we've only developed 60% uh, of the, uh, the land that we had purchased originally. Uh, we've got a number of other options on the table now, which is uh, a large, large diameter pipe facility or high value added standard mechanical pipes. Uh, um, those would be new, uh, brand new facilities. As far as uh, advice to, to other Turkish companies um, looking to invest, you know, come to Texas. It's a, a very uh, um, uh, innovative uh, place. You're close to the customers. Um, there's a lot of incentives uh, available. Um, and uh, if anyone wants to reach out, I can, you know, drop me a note and I can put you in touch with uh, the people that got us to uh, Texas. Thank you for a uh, kind invitation. Uh, I believe there are uh, people uh, who are representing Turkish companies. I think they can uh, contact you to get more information. Uh, thanks for contribution. Uh, 